going to demonstrate how to do uh, ITYW exercises, which I may have given some of you as my clients. Um, <clears throat> the reason I would give this as an ex exercise is to get your shoulder blades moving a bit better. So ITYWs train the muscle groups that allow your shoulder blades to move. We want the shoulder blades to be able to move as well, not just be aware of how they move and strengthen the muscles to move them properly, but also allow the shoulder blades to move so that our joints don't get um, stuck and we don't have any impingement issues uh, in the shoulders when we try and raise our arms overhead. Um, so ITYWs train the muscles that move the scapula. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can use uh, bands to do it. And I'm going to show you an alternative variation because it can be quite challenging with bands. These are pretty small muscles and for a lot of us it's underutilized so it's very weak. So I'm going to show you some body weight alternatives that you can start off with. Alright, so now I'm going to do ITYWs with the resistance band. So this is the I's. So the end position you look like a letter I and this is to train your lower traps. Okay, I've tied a resistance band to my window grill that provides some resistance horizontally, so I'm working against it. Now I'm demonstrating a T raise, and um, you'll see as I turn to the side that at the top position, at the starting position, my hands are slightly above my shoulder level, and I'm coming down to just beneath my shoulder level as I come back. I'm also supinating my hands so my palms are facing up. With the I, the Y raise, and the W raise, you want your thumbs to be facing behind you. So it's a neutral grip. So as you can see, I'm thinking of pointing my thumbs behind me. So this is a Y raise that I'm demonstrating right now. It's very similar to an I raise, but arms are slightly wider so you look like a letter Y. Slightly easier than an I raise. Next, I'm going to demonstrate a W raise. Okay. So I'm, again, thinking of pointing my thumbs behind me, and I'm trying to get my upper arm, or my humerus, which is the bone in my upper arm, to externally rotate. That is the name of the game when it comes to that exercise. Okay, now I'm going to go through what is the different uh, movements the scapula or the shoulder blades can move through. So right now I'm demonstrating elevation. Okay, now I'm demonstrating depression, which is the opposite. Elevation was raising the shoulder blades up, Depression is bringing it down. Now I'm demonstrating protraction, which is rounding the shoulder blades, allowing it to come forward. Now I'm demonstrating retraction, which is the opposite, is bringing the shoulder blades close together. Imagine pinching a pencil in your back with your back. Now I'm raising my arms overhead, and that is allowing my shoulder blades to upwardly rotate. So upwardly rotate is when the shoulder blades come apart like that. Okay? And the last movement it can go through is upward tilt, anterior tilt. All right, that's it. Now I'm going to be demonstrating some variations you can do body weight. I'm sorry about the lighting. It was terrible lighting. I'm tra I'll try and fix that the next time. Okay, so I'm doing my T raises off the floor right now. And this is if you don't have resist access to resistance bands. It's not going to be as good because you're not going to be able to take your muscles through a full range of motion and allow your scapula to move and move through its articulations, which is always best. But it is better than nothing. You're at least going to activate those muscles, which you can do um, as a warm-up, although I would highly recommend resistance band. But pick a light resistance band because these are very challenging exercises, very small muscle groups. So right now, this is the W raise. And as you can see, it's really only working the end range of motion and the peak contraction of these muscles. Um, I hope these help. These are really good. And by really good, I mean they feel really bad.